Hello. In this video, we are going to deal with rotation in quantum mechanics, the particle on a ring problem. So imagine that we have a central point, and then we have a particle rotating in a perfect circle around this point. So the distance that the particle is from the center, we're going to call and we're assuming that R is going to be constant. Other than the particle being constrained to rotate in a perfect circle, there will be no potential energy acting upon the particle. So we want to figure out how to solve that particular problem. So we realize that we have to solve the Schrodinger equation, minus h bar squared over 2m times the Laplacian of psi plus the, the potential times psi being equal to the energy times psi. And since the particle is free to rotate, our potential energy term is going to be zero. We are writing our problem most efficiently in polar coordinates. So therefore, we have to write our Laplacian in polar coordinates. So to do that, we write it as minus h bar squared over 2m. Then we have the second derivative with respect to r plus 1 over r times the first derivative with respect to r plus 1 over r squared times the second derivative with respect to phi all acting on psi. Now that is a complicated expression, but a couple things will make this easier for us. We realize since r is a constant, that both the first and second derivatives with respect to r are going to automatically equal zero. So therefore, these two terms will drop out and we can more simply write our version of the Schrodinger equation as minus h bar squared over 2m times 1 over r squared times the second derivative with respect to phi, all acting on psi, is equal to e times psi. We notice that in the denominator we have this expression 2m times r squared and we make the substitution, we have a new expression called the moment of inertia i, which we define to be equal to m r squared. And using that substitution, we can rewrite the Schrodinger equation that follows as minus h bar squared over 2i times the second derivative with respect to phi of psi being equal to e times psi. So this is the revised version of the Schrodinger equation that we need to solve for this particular situation. So let's make a fortuitous guess as to a trial wave function for this system. I'm going to call this wave function n times e to the i m sub l phi. This may seem like a strange choice, but we sort of recognize uh, a similar wave function in the free particle case. Recall that for the free particle, we had a wave function in the form e to the i k x. So here we can think of x as being replaced by the angle phi and the constant k being replaced by this constant m sub l. Our next step is to show that this particular wave function actually is a solution of our Schroeder equation. So now we have minus h bar squared over 2i times the second derivative with respect to phi. And then we're going to put our trial wave function in here, n times e to the i m sub l phi equal to e psi. So now 
let's exploit the fact that the second derivative is simply the first derivative of the first derivative. So we'll take the derivative of this expression with, with respect to phi the first time. So we end up with minus h bar squared over 2i times the first derivative with respect to phi. And now we'll put inside the parentheses the appropriate first derivative of this expression. So it's going to be i times m sub l times n e to the i m sub l phi. E times psi. So now we can take the derivative one more time. bar squared over 2i times we need to multiply this coefficient by i times m sub l again so we have i squared times m sub l squared times n e to the i m sub l phi equals e times psi. We can again make some simplifications. We note that i squared is simply equal to minus 1. So minus 1 times minus 1 cancels that out. So we end up with h bar squared over 2i times m sub l squared. So now it's going to be multiplied times n e to the i, m sub l, phi. We recognize that the expression in green is simply our wave function, and the expression here is our eigenvalue e. So this is our value for e, and typically we simply switch around the location of the m sub l squared and the h bar squared, so we more conveniently write it as m sub l, squared times h bar squared all over 2i. So we've shown two things. One, we've shown that a wave function of the form n e to the i m sub l phi actually is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian for this particular system. And secondly, we've shown that the energy associated with that particular eigenfunction is going to be m sub l squared h bar squared over 2i. We have not yet shown any conditions on m sub l. In our next video, we're going to show what the more specific conditions on m sub l are. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.